What's going on guys? So, made a little more progress here on the Volks rod. Um, got a chassis put together. Still need some fine tuning. I need some time to think. Um, the suspension right now is bottomed out all the way. And I would really like that to be the right height. Um, the camber in the back is a little too much. That's Like I said, that's all the way bottomed out. But um, I'm not sure yet how to how to approach that, so I'm just going to wrap this video up here, but let me get you a closer look at what all I've done. Alright, so uh, basically I've recycled almost all of the original chassis. I used the stock fiberglass chassis plate in its stock location. Um, I've rearranged things a little bit and uh, added some steel rods, steel square tubing to lengthen the front end out. But I just mimicked all the mounting holes and extended everything and I uh, even reused the steering. So we do have the bell crank and everything in there. I'll get the body off of here so I can show you. So um, yeah, like I said, the camber is a little aggressive in the back. I need it to at least be there. But we'll have to play with the uh, where the body sets and everything with that as well. Steering works great. Everything lines up good. I flipped the bell crank here around was on the back side but it's mounted to the chassis I never even took it off so I'm pretty pretty happy with that I did have to replace one of the rod ends because it was uh, broken on the original this one's about worn out it keeps falling off um, playing with the angle of the front I, it needed to set up off of the rails a little bit because of these the way the front is let me show you closer so you have this cast piece which is the shock towers and the the bars go through it and the bar is the bottom of this bar is flush with the bottom of the bracket, but this part here hangs down about two or three millimeters lower. So I uh, put some two mil spacers on the back bolts, and the front just sits on the frame rail, and it's tightened down pretty nice. Um, the main thing that I needed to do to this to make the uh, arms travel up is it has these stops made on it. As you can see at the up position here. That little stop catches and there was one that came off of the top arm and allowed it to only go to about there so we got almost half an inch more drop out of grinding that off uh, that's all i was hesitant to do was to hack up the original piece but that was the only way to go about it so here we are <laughs> um steering lines up shock towers and shocks give me enough room to actually mount a real shock maybe something like a to me a grand hauler shock, something 60 millimeters, and uh, that all should work out just fine. Uh, a couple things I'm not happy with, I did, because the way all this was going to bolt together, I, I didn't cut the square tubing in half, I usually take that half inch square and I'll cut it down the middle and make C-channel, <clears throat> and the way this mounted, I needed the strength to mount all the bolts through and everything, so that didn't work, so it is a little heavy, got two steel rods here on the bottom I'll show you more of in a minute but it works I just like I said I gotta get the the ride height and the body position and I can't do any of that so we get to the suspension and I'm I'm just pretty worn out for today so part of what I did I stole the 3d printed Volkswagen engine off of the apocalypse sand scorcher it really fit the bill for this the patina on it the rust the real rust and stuff is actually perfect <laughs> and I kind of based where my body is gonna sit off of that because I don't have any body mounts yet. Um, but the way everything lined up, the front body mount here is still aligned perfectly with the hole in the body. So, um, this one's short because it was off of the, the Ford F-150. has the lower bar there and the shorter thing there. So, I may steal the longer one off of the Apocalypse Sand Scorcher and we should be able to just put the body on with a pin like normal. I hate to do pin, but I, it's, it's there. It's simple. <laughs> I can't say no to, the, to stuff like that when it works out that way. Um, I would like the front to sit lower, but that's all I'm getting out of these arms. And that's <clears throat> part of my ride height issue. This is, again, the ride height I would like, but we're all the way bottomed out front and back. So, I don't know yet how I'm going to tackle that. I can't really get the front arms to move anymore. They are about maxed out the joints here that hold the spindle. There's really no nowhere else for them to go. That's about as far up as they'll go and uh, as far down as they'll go. We've still got a lot more down travel. 
So short of mounting the whole front end at a slight angle, I'm not really sure how to do it any other way. And I don't really know how to make that look right either. So a lot of things to think about. I'm pretty happy with the, the motor and everything, the way it fits with the body. Uh, just not happy about the camber. I want camber. I want a lot of camber, but not quite that much. I need to set where it is, but have that much camber. <laughs> So anyway, let me show you the bottom here and what, what I've done. All right, so using the square tubing, I was able to recess the screws. So I just drilled larger holes on this side and then a smaller hole on the other side. The screw is actually down inside of the tubing. Um, when I first mocked this up, I had the tubing on the bottom here, and that helped move the rear suspension up where I wanted, but it made the frame rails hang down way too low. So I flipped them. I had to loosen everything up. Luckily, my drill bit was a little bit bigger than the hole. So it gave me enough wiggle room to squeeze these in and the holes that are already there are too close to the outside edge so I couldn't reuse those from this side. So I just ran some longer hardware all the way through, kind of sandwiched the whole deal together. Um, the torsion arms. So these rear suspension uses these torsion arms. They only go in two ways. They go in the arm that way or the way it just was. Like that, and that's where the little hook sits in the control arm. So, I'm hoping I can reuse these, and that would be our spring for our suspension. Um, like I said, I don't need a whole lot of lift, don't need a whole lot of movement. So, I may have to come up with some device up here to hold these at the angle that I need them for the ride height I need. So, and that's going to be determined as well by how much weight, you know, battery electronics on here, how it sits how much squat we get so uh yeah that's something to fine tune near the end but i figured i'd just reuse the the fiberglass chassis like i said the the steering worked the original holes for the front end mount also i used to mount the fiberglass to the metal in the front and the holes in the back off the fiberglass line up with these holes on the back of the body pretty close to it they were slotted for adjustability so I've swapped tires and wheels around, just doing mock-up. Um, these front tires are off a 1.8 scale model car. They're not RC tires at all. They are solid. They are worn out, old. Those are from the 60s. This one has blue paint on it that I can't get off. But they're white walls, they're skinny. The wheels were the ones that Awesome Designs made for me for the Gasser originally. And they're made to accept the bearings and fit on a spindle. They are just a hair shallow for these spindles. And that one's tight, but I need to throw a washer in there and shim that out a little bit one way or the other. But I'm not dead set on using those yet. The back wheels are were 3D printed, kind of vintage spoke style. The Model A, Model T kind of wheels. And those were from uh, the Long and Tall Texan on Instagram. He uh, does pretty... Awesome design stuff as well, just like Jason at Awesome Designs, and yeah, it's uh, I've had him for a while. He he liked what I was doing, and he said he had a set just laying around, sent them to me. I had all these plans to use them, and just never got around to it. They are three D printed spokes, and uh, they're pretty cool. They're made. These are one five fives. They are actually really really stout, and they have twelve millimeter hex on the back. Um, two of them were printed in white. Two of them are printed in black. So the CDs didn't accept paint very well, but I do plan on on weathering those if if we go with that because that's another problem with the Tamiya buggies it has the spindle in the front and the back has I don't know what you really call it a wide five type pattern. Let's see if this is one of them. Uh, remember the fronts and the backs, yeah. So these just have this little star shape in the in the back, and it's got a metal piece that sits on the pin that goes into the wheel. Um, I could probably just take that off, put a 12 millimeter hex over the pin, slide the wheel on. I had to drill out the uh, 12 millimeter hexes to put on here right now, just for looks. And I think if I take the other plate off and shove the 12 millimeter hex back to the pin, I'm going to have way too much uh, shaft sticking out and I won't be able to get it to tighten down and stay put. Plus I need the extra width because of the camber. You can see this is fully cambered out with these pretty wide tires. And we're right at the shock bolt. So, another hurdle we have to overcome. Um, also, these tires are garbage. These tires are from a early 90s Radio Shack Red Shaker. It was the 
Radio Shack RC that had the Zuzu Amigo body that was an exact, it was exactly the same as the Tamiya body. I bought one of those and used the body for a build quite a few years ago. And I, you know, the tires, they fit these 155 wheels perfect. And they would be okay, except I mounted them on some beadlocks. And this one is good. The other one is ripped and torn all the way around. It's, you know, 30 year old rubber. It didn't hold up very well. <laughs> and the pressure of the beadlock clamping it destroyed the other two completely and this one one side of it's pretty well busted out so I don't know what I'm gonna do for tires but I am digging the wheels and I think we can find a way to make it work um, hoping to keep the torsion bars and make that work and um, yeah only thing left is to get get it lower I really need it to set like this with the chassis on the ground then we can adjust the ride height up then we can mount the body and get everything balanced out where we need because right now the body sits perfect as far as relation to the tires. I, I, I want that look. Oh, snug fit up here. <laughs> so I put the steering in. I kind of work around it. And pull the body all the way forward. And you can see the, the stance is pretty good. The front, we've got room for full lock turning. This thing actually has decent turning radius if we have a good enough servo in there at the rear yeah I don't really want to go too high and this thing's got a wild range of motion I think that maybe max the, the height that I want to go so maybe quarter inch eight millimeter suspension travel will probably be plenty for this thing just got to get it to look how I want at that height because I don't want it to just be bottomed out all the time but um, yeah, let me show you how the back fits. I spent a little time cutting the body to fit the uh, engine. This motor is 3D printed. You can get them on Shapeways. It's from Knight Customs. He's got quite a few variants of that. Um, I've had this one for quite a while. I had a partnership deal with Shapeways for a little bit. And uh, we did a whole bunch of stuff to that Sand Scorcher bug using Shapeways products. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty cool thing. It has multiple pieces. The belt, um, my, my distributor broke off, unfortunately. I'm going to have to uh, figure out how to reattach that. But, um, yeah, and you can still see some of the, the motor housing there, but it was, it did it that way so it fits in the right proportion distance from the transaxle, swing arms, and all that. And so I was looking at this. Uh, it should have a, tw or a pin in it, and I should be able to swap that out for, a, like, a deep 12 mil hex and drill out the center like I did this one but I can't get this off I can't tell what's on it if it's JV weld or solder or something but it, somebody's done something to help that stay on there unless it's just bonded to it over time because this is a pretty old old chassis so I don't know that's gonna be a, a fight for another day though but that's it for this episode guys I appreciate you watching and following along with the channel um, look for more to come on this here pretty soon. Kind of excited about it. I really dig the way it looks. Just got to work out some of the loose ends here and get some suspension on it. And it really doesn't have a whole lot of stuff left to do. We got to come up with some windows. And uh, I'm not sure what I want to do about the sunroof hole. I have the piece to go in it somewhere. It's not weathered, but I really don't like that seam. And I don't. I don't know. I don't really think I'm going to do a full interior in it. This would be the one to do it because the motor's in the back. And all we got to do is hide a battery and electronics. Um, it doesn't all have to be in the interior, so I don't know. We're going to have to do some uh, filler panels behind the wheel arches as well. Do some stuff like that. So Still got a ways to go as far as cosmetics, but mechanically making some really good progress. But uh, keep it scale. I'll see you all in the next video.